So I want to ask you guys a question. This is this is coming back up to the shallows a little bit for a little lightness, okay? Sure. Okay. And then we All can, right. if we want to, after this little story time, we can dive back into the depths. Um, and this is a question straight out of the film. So I'm going to ask it and I'm going to answer it uh, while y'all think about what your answer will be. And as Gordon asks Phil, so too do I ask Reed and Matt, guys, what is the stupidest thing you've ever done oh my god <laughs> so uh again i'm actually decoupling this a bit from a moralistic response uh but i had pondered that because when he asked that question uh, listeners may not have discerned uh these last months reed and i are very intentional about trying to be inquisitive towards each other about the material covering when gordon asked that question i was like there it is there's a question <laughs> <laughs> write that down so so I, I pondered this today so while y'all are thinking about what's the stupidest thing you've ever done? Uh, I'm emphasizing the stupid part for me. And so I'll, I'll let the listeners enjoy these tales. And if, if your brain allows you to pay attention to them while you think of your own thing, more power to you. Um, so I was processing, I was like, what is the dumbest thing? And specifically, I wanted to think of like as an adult, you know, because clearly in the context of the movie, uh, heavy morality aside, it's, it's an adult stupid choice, not so much our, our idiocies as a kid. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a, a funny story that's really gonna illustrate how how uh, single-minded and stupid I can be if I work at it. So we've got three kids. The third one is omitted from this because I learned my lesson after two errors. So um, uh, uh, crib building, really strange diversion here or digression here, but crib building is the uh, topic of my stupidest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So when our first child was you know either eminent or yeah surely she was not quite born yet uh, uh daddy wanted to prove his sort of spousal ingenuity and put the crib together so um i'm i'm working uh, uh tediously on this stupid crib in what would be the baby's room and i put it together and i'm all proud of myself and then i realized i put it together wrong which if you know anything about how cribs are assembled is a real pain in the ass. And um, so I, I have to dismantle, <laughs> to dismantle this crib. So then I put it back together and no, it's quite true. I put it together wrong again. Uh, I really have a problem with instructions. So, so that's kid one is putting a crib together incorrectly twice in the span of, I don't know, wow. 24 hours. So kid number two rolls along and I've learned my lesson, you know, uh, I'm going to get this right. I'm not, not going to fail. My wife was working one day and the crib showed up. Uh, we had a ranch home, you know, it's a single story ranch home, uh, a living room area hall down the hallway was kid number two's room. And I turned on some tunes. Uh, I knew I had kid number one's errors in my head, cribs errors in my head. I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. So I've got this spacious room. I lay out all the stuff. I've got some tunes on. My wife's working. I'm going to surprise her by putting this crib together while she's gone. And I succeed. I succeed in putting together kid number two's crib. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the problem then <laughs> revealed itself when you really can't take a crib you assembled in one big room, squeeze it through a small hallway to a oh, bedroom no. down the hall. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then, yes gentlemen adult friends it got stuck in the hallway because i was so mad trying to get this stupid crib <laughs> and i left it i left it suspended between the walls of the hallway in in the air I was like i'm not i'm so mad and so disheartened wow. it feels so stupid so at least the way gordon phrases what is the stupidest thing you've ever done incorrectly uh, reading friggin' instructions uh, because sure enough friends the instructions while yes teaching you how to assemble it yes also tell you where to assemble it and it's in the destination room not of course room, but of course i failed that yeah. part so yeah that was what i thought about for what is the stupidest thing without getting hyper confessional here on the show <laughs> that i have ever done so who would like to go next for the stupidest thing they've ever done oh my gosh 
Oh my gosh. Well, it's hard to, uh, I, I'll jump on the sword. So hard to choose. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's like, I'm like, that's why I'm I like, want to go first. Get, get my stupidity yeah. out of the way so you can feel the freedom. Well, you've also, you know, you also had the luxury of like thinking about this for a couple of You know of what's days, funny about you, you saying know? that? No, that was just today. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> what's funny about that is I thought about emailing both of you like, hey, be prepared to answer the, and then I was just like, nah, I'll, I'll, just, nah, I'll just have them freestyle. Put fun off the cuff anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put it on the, put it on the fly. Yeah. Um, gosh, it is, it is really, really hard. I, you know, to quote, to quote Ash, uh, I'm going to do a lot of stupid things and I've done a lot <laughs> of stupid things. Um, so I, it's, it's funny because like, so, so the way that you can get like super, uh, like existential about things, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it to the shallows for something like really dumb, uh, yeah. The, that I've done because like, yeah, you, you certainly like you've, uh, you've done a lot of stupid things in your, in your life. Are you um, speaking to yourself or to me? Cause no, no, can't no tell I, whether I, to, to the air, you know, <laughs> yes, to yes. the environment. Um, so, so, but I mean, it's like on, on, on one hand, there's all the, the multitude of times that I, you know, my wife asks me to go look for something. I go look for it. I do not find it. Oh, she man. goes and I in two seconds, she has, she has pulled it forth and she has conjured it, you know, Akio, whatever I was looking I just for. assume right. that is a character defect in me at this point. Like that's, yeah, that, that's that's it has even, to be on. Yeah, yeah. has to be on my end as well. Um, so, but gosh, uh, I'm going to need to, Matt, do you have something? Cause I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to actually like define something. Um, to, to I'm going to, I'm going to go with a Bob, another Bob Farrell story. Actually, the someone who told oh. me the story about the, the, yeah. Um, so, but other thing Bob would do, he'd have these amazing dinner parties at his house in Ithaca. And uh, I remember one time I was over there. And um, and by the way, the only way I can tell this really stupid story is because it was followed by one of the smarter things I ever did, which is, so we're in his kitchen waiting for these gigantic hamburgers to finish grilling. And I look up on top of Bob's refrigerator and I notice that there's a revolver sitting up there. And my thought process is no one would leave a loaded revolver Oh, lying no, out on top of a refrigerator at a dinner party when they knew strangers would be wandering in the house. So there's no reason to worry that this gun might be loaded. So I pick it up. <gasps> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> and there's this moment where I'm sitting there, geez, what should I do with this toy? Should oh, I put it at my head or should my I just gosh. out the back of the, you know, like where should I, where should I be pointing it when I drive fire this obviously unloaded gun? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, God. And um, fortunately, I, at that point, made the smart decision to turn to Bob and say, Bob, this isn't loaded, right? Oh, oh my God. And his eyes get very, very big and is like, oh, yeah, I guess it is loaded. And <gasps> it, it was, in fact, a loaded revolver lying out in... Just in plain of, of everything. Oh. I mean, it was on top of the fridge. So if you were a kid, you wouldn't have been able to reach it. But yeah. You'd, you'd, but if you were a house guest, a dinner guest, <laughs> <laughs> what's this? <laughs> oh my gosh. And Lord. you know, I, I, I mean, so yeah. So he took that, put it in another room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of, of course. Of course. In the same, but, you know, it was, it was, and I, I know for, I, I know for a lot of people, I, in, in my, in the circles I have these days, this would be seen as a heinous thing. This oversight, how, how could you possibly do that? But sure. Sure. There's this weird divide in America where, you know, there are people who have never been around guns who think of them as the one ring, you know, it's like this, mm, this mm. malevolent object, why would you possibly want it? And then there are people who have been around guns, which is like a bandsaw or any other, you know, potentially dangerous tool that you, you do need to be careful. You can't let mm. your kids play around near it, but accidents happen, oversights happen, and it's, it's yeah. just, you know, talking about a lucky moment for bob i mean i'm i'm glad i didn't shoot myself in the head but i wouldn't have had to live with the mistake he would have yeah. oh my lord Woo. yeah no Woo. yeah yeah. So, so, um, yeah no yeah go ahead was that no, was no, that the, no, that's that, the was, okay so i, I can appreciate la- that yeah that feels in the spirit yeah so i finally landed on one that okay. will not you know put me or or people that i love and am still interacting with at, at profound <laughs> risk um okay so <laughs> I was metaphorically or literally. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, I was not yet married, um, and was not even dating my wife at the time. And I needed a ride to the airport 
uh, from a girl that I, at the time, was fond of and had kind of tried to make some inclination towards like, oh, you know, would you like to go out sometime or whatever? And she wasn't really very interested. Um, and, and I remember she had offered to give me a ride to the airport. And I remember thinking, well, she's going to drop me off at the airport. And typically, with enough time, I like to go if I'm at the airport. Uh, I don't really suffer from flight anxiety, but it's nice to have like a, a, a glass of wine or something before you go to the airport, right? Well, I was anxious and nervous at the time. I was in my early 20s, and I was anxious and nervous at the time of like, okay, I, I, you know, wanting to be impressive or whatever. So I'm going to loosen myself up a little bit. You know, I'll have... <laughs> I'll have maybe that maybe that second glass of wine, you know. And so so maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll. That do was that. your loaded gun right there. That was my like, loaded. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, but but unfortunately, unfortunately, mine did not end as copacetically as, as that story ended. So so I have the second glass, and we get into the car, and what you realize when you get into someone's car and they're driving is that when <clears throat> the way that they drive in the neighborhood. And the way that they drive on the freeway is going to be the same, but freeway is going to be just that much more heightened. And she was spiraling down the highway and just completely weaving in and out of traffic. And I realized about halfway through <laughs> that I was in a bit of a mayday situation as the passenger in the car of this person that I'm trying to impress. And uh, without getting too uh, gross about the whole thing, uh, the wine was not my friend and it actually <laughs> caused me... <laughs> to lose every bit of what I had just consumed right there in the car of the person that I'm trying quite desperately in my life to be impressive towards. Wow. So, so that Nailed all happened. It. Yeah. That all happened on the freeway. <laughs> and, and so then like, and also like there's a, there's a deadline to make it to the air, <laughs> to the airport. And so like I get to the airport and have to like dramatically like find a bathroom i had to like change my shirt oh, there oh, like and and then had to had to kind of make it through the security gate had to make it all and of course like if you if you've ever had the experience where you've drunk enough of anything that you would have thrown up like it was not like also in my head i'm just like you know it's not as if the buzz or whatever just evaporates with all of that so yeah that was no, it just turns hmm. against you yes yeah. it, it all just it was one of the most miserable experiences <laughs> I remember Adam. I just have this picture of of this car just careening into the LAX, you oh know, uh, departures lane, and you just being booted out of it, and you're it was dragging terrible. yourself through the LAX airport, and like yeah, yeah it was. He's getting caught. You're barfing on them. That's a wonderful. Yeah. Needless to say, you. yeah. Needless to say, she never. I'm proud of both any. of you. Those are good stories. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs>